Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be talking about nearsightedness, also known officially as myopia. So what is nearsightedness or myopia? Nearsightedness or myopia is what happens whenever light enters the eyeball and it doesn't quite reach the retina and it comes to a focal point just short of being able to reach the retina. And that's what makes things blurry for those of you that are nearsighted or have myopia far away, like you, you're not able to see far away. In just a few moments, we're going to put a picture up in order to be able to describe what's happening, and I'll be able to walk you through what that looks like and what it means for you and how you can easily have this problem corrected. There's several different ways you can do this. So stay tuned as we put the picture up. Okay, so I'm looking at the picture right now, just alongside y'all, and here's what we've got. So we've got some light rays entering your eyeball. This is what happens when you see throughout the day, whether it's daytime, nighttime, whatever it may be. As long as there is some level of light that exists in order for you to be able to see, light rays will enter your eyeball. The first thing that happens is that the light passes through the cornea. That is the first structure of the front of the eyeball in which light enters. We're going to talk about the layers of the cornea, the anatomy. We'll go over a bunch of anatomy on this channel. But for now, light goes through the cornea. Follow the light rays as they bend down and head towards the lens. This is the crystalline lens inside of your eyeball. So, light passes through the crystalline lens. It continues on towards the retina, towards the back of the eyeball. But, in cases of myopia or nearsightedness, what happens is light comes to what we call a focal point. This is when all the light rays and everything that you see converges to a single point just before it gets to the retina. So that's where if you're looking at an image of a teddy bear or if you're watching TV or if you're looking at something far away, it comes to a stopping point there. As the light rays continue, they technically continue passing forward in a way that makes it very blurry. So the image is very large and it's very blurry. It lands on the retina, but also it lands near the macula, which is your best center of vision. Think of this as like your high definition TV channel. Um, but when the light is not that clear, or when it's not that easy to see, this is what happens when nearsighted patients say they can't see far away. So in order to be able to see, you need to move, we need to move this focal point back to land exactly on the retina, specifically on the macula, to get you seeing your best. How do we do that? There's a couple of ways you can do this. You can be fitted for a prescription in an eye exam for glasses. For contact lenses to move that light point back. Some patients even ask us if they're considered a candidate for LASIK or PRK. Uh, we'll get to those procedures later, but those are surgical procedures that some people will electively allow to do that ophthalmologists perform in order to reshape the cornea to move that light source back towards the retina. But again, in order to be able to be considered a candidate for that, it's heavily recommended and suggested that you have a consultation with an ophthalmologist so that they can medically evaluate your eyeball to make sure that you're a, a healthy candidate for that procedure. But going back to the first two, which is the two that I do specifically, glasses and contact lenses, and you can get into whole other things of contact lenses, like specialty contact lenses, gas permeable contact lenses, scleral contact lenses, we'll cover that later. But for now, we're just going to stick to what most of y'all are probably wearing, which is the soft contact lenses. So whether you're wearing glasses way out in front, about 13 millimeters in front of your eyeball, or if you're wearing contact lenses right on the cornea, it adjusts the position in which the light rays land. So it moves that focal point back towards the retina in order to get you to see clearly in the distance. More or less, that's how nearsightedness works. And the crystalline lens does change shape and size, but only for a time, and it doesn't really help to move it that far back. What's going to really play into a factor with the lens is when we talk about the far side in this patient. That'll be in another video coming up. If you ever have any topics you'd like for us to cover or any suggestions or anything else you'd like for us to expound a little bit more on in these videos, drop it in the comments below. And be sure again to subscribe to the channel to stay up to date on the latest content. I'm Dr. Bryce Heffington, and we'll see you next time.